Hello, I'm Atuba George and I bless God for this opportunity to bring his truth to you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Thank you for your glorious word. Lord, we open our heart to receive all of it. And I declare today burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. I was sharing something with you yesterday, you know, from, from Matthew chapter 5 and verse 19. I was telling you, those people who came out and were saying, you know, don't pay tight. Oh, don't give your money here and stuff like that. Listen, they are causing more harm to you. I know there are false prophets. I know there are false teachers. I know there are cold men dressed up in suit, preaching behind the pulpit. I know. I know. But I also know that no giving is in vain. Like I told you yesterday, even when money is stolen from you, it's not in vain. I wish you will catch this truth. <laughs> oh, see, there are some of us Satan doesn't know how to handle us. He's when it comes to matters and our names are involved, say, see that one, just go. Because anything you do, anything you do, work out for his good. <laughs> That's how your life is supposed to be. He says, all things work together. For to who? To those who love God. Now, who are those who love God? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment keep my word now what does that mean okay so i love god <laughs> oh thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit oh listen you can be too hot for the devil and that's what i'm teaching you so they just stole from you now okay and like oh wow you're thinking of what to do I've stolen your money. Okay. Lord, see, the Bible says in all your ways, acknowledge him. So before you start running to the police station, before you start running helter skelter, hey, Lord, how did these guys get there? I bring a report before you, Lord. They've just stolen my money. Lord, what do you want me to do now? And then the Lord will speak to you. Whatever he tells you to do. If he tells you go after them, he will give you the direction to go and you will get your money back. If he tells you, you know what? Why don't you just leave it? And I'll bless you. I should leave my money. No, 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 Lord. I'm encouraging these thieves. I know, allow the Lord. He knows how to handle them. If he says leave it, so what do you do? Okay, Lord. I know what to do. You know, Jesus actually says, he says, give to every man that asks of you. And from him who takes away your good, don't ask him back. What does that mean? If someone takes your good, don't go and ask him back. That's, that's that. If someone steals from you, don't desire it back. Why? They stole from me. Because God is your father. And he's got much more in store for you. I've, I've had that experience in my life. Oh, you know, sometimes when we share testimonies, that's why Jesus said, anyone who fulfills and teach men shall be called great in the kingdom. Men may not see you great, but the day will come when the master himself will tell who's great. Then we will know. Then you will realize that the thing that is most esteemed with men becomes an abomination to the Lord. You will know that day. And the things that have been despised of men, the ones that have been despised of men, you now realize that day like, wow, we didn't know. Oh, we didn't know. Praise <laughs> God. That's the truth. So the Lord said, let it go. I said, okay, Lord. So Lord, I let that money or that car, I let it go as a seed into whoever's life because I trust you will bless me. You have turned that stealing that they stole from you. You have turned it over to a giving. 
See? And then you now walk in the realm of it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now someone say, what, what's this man saying? I mean, what, what, what kind of nonsense is this? I'm telling you the truth. This is how we live our lives. We keep his word. Now, the moment he says, let it go, and then I say, okay, Lord, I let it go. That stealing now joins to other things, working together for my good. Guess what? By the time the Lord is true, you will sit down and say, man, if they had not stolen that thing from me, I wouldn't have gotten it. Ah, God bless that thief. <laughs> yeah, it's the truth. That's what happened to Joseph. Oh, they thought they were doing him harm. They thought they were doing him. But Joseph always went back to the Lord and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, stay in this house. Okay, sir, I will stay in this house. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's how he grew up in Potiphar's house. He became, have you ever thought about this? Now I've said this to you before. How come at least there was a time in Joseph's life that he was in charge of all of Potiphar's wealth? At that point, he could have taken a trip to see his father. Why didn't he go? Why didn't he go look for his father? Even if he's not escaping. I just want to go tell my dad that I'm fine, I'm alive, you know, so he will not be thinking I'm dead. Why didn't he go? Because the Lord told him to stay and be faithful in Potiphar's house. And then he, he, he got into prison. Now, remember also, from the prison, he became prime minister. And there was seven years of plenty before the famine years that brought his brothers and his father over to Egypt. So those seven years of famine, he was the prime minister also. But he didn't go home. Can you trust God to that point? That's what Jesus said, if you love me, keep my words. Someone hurts you so bad. I say, Lord... And God says, forgive him. No, Lord, you don't understand. You don't understand. You know, sometimes we will say, hey, Lord, if it is you, I don't, if this thing was done to you, leave, oh, I know they flogged you, I know they did all my, but this thing this person did to me. But if the Lord says forgive, the question is, do you love him? If you love the Lord, you will forgive. You will keep his word. And the moment you show that you keep his word, what happens to you? All things work together for good. So you see, that statement in Romans chapter 8 is not just saying a static thing. All things work together for good. No, there is a condition for that. What is the condition? It is only meant for those who love God. Praise God. And, and guess what? You know, he says, who love God, who are called according to his purpose. You know why? Because they listen to the voice of God. They follow the instruction the Lord is going to give to them. Guess what? The Lord is not going to give you any instruction that is not according to his purpose for your life. So when the Lord says, let it go, it's according to your purpose. So he says, Father, you just told me to let it go. I let Don't let it go in sorrow. Don't say, hmm, wow, can you imagine? God said I should let it go. <laughs> Mm, if not God, eh? if not God, eh? I, I know what I would have done. I know how I would have got my money back. I know how I would have done. I know what, hey, don't talk like that. If the Lord says, let it go, guess what? You go before the Lord and say, Father, thank you. I just heard your word telling me to let it go. So Lord, I did let it go. You can even become legalistic with it. Say, Father, at so such a time, the time is now 12 minutes past 9 a.m. On the 12th of January, or whatever date you call yourself. I have decided to let this go according to your word that came to me. So, Lord Jesus, oh, this is where the high priest comes in now. Hallelujah. So, Lord Jesus, I trust you. And I trust that you will administer justice in this matter. What justice are you thinking in your heart? Justice that you will see on the news that that person that stole from you was shot dead? No, that's not justice. Justice is not served yet. You know, sometimes we, are, we get this thing twisted in our minds. Someone did you wrong. 
And you're like, oh God, no, 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 Lord, you must recompense, you must recompense, you must recompense. Who does God recompense? You, not the person. So don't start waiting for the person's downfall. Don't start waiting for the person to be arrested. Hey, hey, that's the guy that stole my car. Yes, mm, I said it. I said it. Hey, meanwhile, you are still without the car and you are happy that the person has been shot dead. What benefit has that be, uh, done to you? No, Father, I seek justice in this situation and I receive it from you as my high priest. In Jesus' name, amen. What is justice? Justice means they stole one car from you and the next week you have two cars. <laughs> God. And someone just calls you and says, how are you doing? You know, I, I'm thinking of selling my car. You know, I don't know if, are you interested? I say, I'm, I'm interested, but I don't have money. You know what, come and look at the car first. And then you go look at the car. Ah, like, oh, wow, I like this car. This is actually a car I was saying I was going to buy next. I said, oh, then take it. Say, how much is it? Um, what can you offer? Mm, I don't really don't have money now. You know, I just had a little issue. Yeah, how much can you offer? This is what I can offer. You know what? You're my friend. Oh, I like you. you just bring it. Say, really? Yeah, just bring it. Yeah. Just have money here. Recompense, praise God. Yeah, that's recompense. Who's doing the work? Jesus. Our high priest. You know, Hebrews 7 tells us, People who don't tithe. Now, now no, I don't mean just give money to church. Give 10% to church. If you don't understand what you're doing, I, I kind of feel sorry for you. You know, when I tell you this, that you take your tithe before the Lord and you give it to Him and allow Him to tell you who to give it to. So you bring your tithe before Him. I say, Father, you have blessed me. So here is your tithe. And I'm waiting for instructions, whatever you want me to do with it. I'm waiting. And you can put it aside, put it in an account if it's money, or keep it some. Just, you. this is God's tithe. I'm waiting for instructions. When that instruction comes, it is a word given to you to obey. When you obey, you are showing that you love God. Everything you do, you are expressing your love for him. So the Lord tells you, oh, that, that my money that is with you, yes, Lord, give it to so so and so person. It could be anyone. Who's speaking to you? The high priest himself. The high priest is talking to you. He's the one that receives our tithe. And he's now the one telling you how to administer his funds. Oh, la basaka tala bragada. Now you will understand what it means by we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. You know, I was talking to someone who were, who were looking at events happening and, and, and you know, um, what's going on around the world. And I said to the person, I said, listen. And that's why what I'm teaching is very important. I was sharing this message with the person. I said, listen. If... The world today comes up with a law. I say no buying and selling for you except you receive. Uh, okay, we're talking about COVID-19 vaccines. So I said, I don't believe that is it. But if it is, let's, let's take it to the extreme. If it is, it's not a problem to me. I don't need to buy and sell. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't need to buy and sell. What's going to happen? I'll connect with my high priest. I say, Lord, what do we do today? He said, all right, no, don't worry. Someone is bringing you supply. The people who have received the mark, you know, say, if you say that's the mark of the beast, the people who have received the mark, they themselves are the ones who will be responsible to meeting our needs. You don't understand this. Because you don't know the ways of God. You don't know the ways of God. So when we say, tithe faithfully, you don't understand what we are saying. You are thinking someone is looking for your money. No. No, pre no true minister of God 
will be after your pocket. The only reason they will be after your pocket is to put something there. Yeah. Why? Because a true minister of Jesus Christ must have found out one thing, and the most important thing. It is the Lord Jesus who meets your need. So you wait for him to command you on what to do. You wait for him to tell you how to do it. The moment he tells you what to do and how to go about it, he supplies the funds. No true minister goes around asking people for money. They don't. They don't. Because we are constrained by the Spirit of God. But we teach you what we do. We teach you what we practice and how the blessing comes. That's what I'm doing to you today. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.